for our listeners, this is Karen Monahan. Hi. <laughs> uh, she's the Director of Strategic Communications and Digital Engagement at Darkness to Light. She's been a leader in communications, advertising, and market industry creating integrated communications for international brands with a more recent focus in the nonprofit sector. She's passionate about the protection of children, is dedicated to empowering adults with the tools needed to prevent child ab sexual abuse or intervene if abuse is suspected. Karen has been director, has been at Darkness to Light since August of 2013 and oversees the creation of all online and offline communication and engagement. Welcome, Karen. Erica, um, she is the director of programs with the Darkness to Light. Over the course of the last six years, she's worked on the development of five new adult-focused child sexual abuse training courses and the reversioning of Darkness to Light, which is the flagship pro um, their flagship program, Stewards of Children. She believes strongly in the prevention of child sexual abuse and is in an adult responsibility. She oversees the creation of all new curriculum and the delivery of Darkness to Light's training programs and the training of all authorized facilitators. Welcome you two beautiful ladies and what a wonderful thing that you're doing here. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what, what brought you to working in this kind of field? I'll start with you, Karen. <laughs> well, um, I just feel like I'm, I have 11 nieces and nephews in my family and um, I don't have children of my own, but having a family, of, you know, a large family with lots of kids, I became more interested in creating environments that are safe for them. Um, so I made a big career shift working for, in traditional advertising and came over to the nonprofit space. It's like I really wanted to do something that is socially responsible and will put some good into the world. So I feel so strongly about this organization that we're really, um, we are on the very hopeful side of child sexual abuse where we know that it can be prevented. And so it's an amazing organization to be a part of. Very good. Thank you. And Erica? Yeah, I was working in the, um, in the corporate industry and just wanted to, like Karen said, make a difference. Um, and I've known about Darkness to Light um, because I've lived in the Charleston area where we were founded for um, almost 10 years now and always thought that it was such an amazing organization um, and feeling very passionately about protecting children in general. Um, when this opportunity um, came about, I, it was something that I couldn't pass up. And I've been here now six years and I now have a, a child of my own and um, it, it makes it more personal and I definitely just um, feel as though it is my calling in life to, to work on this mission. Very good. Well, tell us what the mission is of Darkness to Light. Could you kind of shine some light about the background of um, Darkness to Light and then uh, carry sure. forward what the mission is? So are we are... <clears throat> to empowering adults to prevent child sexual abuse. So um, while we believe that it's important for kids to be able to talk about their bodies and body safety, we very strongly believe that it's an adult responsibility to keep kids safe. So everything we do is about empowering adults um, through raising awareness and educating. And we do have a flagship training program um, which is a two-hour online or facilitator-led training called Stewards of Children. And that um, really empowers adults to pe be able to prevent, recognize, and react responsibly to child sexual abuse. I don't know if you want to add anything more about stewards. Um, sure. Um, just to kind of backtrack on, and I always like the story of just how Darkness to Light was founded, but um, the founder actually was a survivor of sexual abuse and had a daughter of her own. And when her daughter was four, the age that she was abused at, she started looking for resources to help her prevent it from happening to her own daughter and really realized that there was nothing out there. And that's how Darkness to Light was first founded. Um, so I think that's just interesting that one woman's struggle um, turn into something that we have now trained over 1.3 million adults to better protect children from sexual abuse. Um, well, the whole reason that um, the book that that 
was just is just being published. It's called "We Choose to Thrive: Our Voices Rising in Unison to Share a Message of Hope and Inspiration with Abuse Survivors um, That They Can Heal." Is that for most of us, it started with childhood, and there was no one to look, that was really knew what to look at. And I I know even family members that turned a blind eye to it because they didn't they didn't want the responsibility of getting involved and they didn't know what to do about it and I am so happy as we watch what's happening that there's more and more awareness being created and more and more of us know what to look for and I think for people that have gone through this as a child and there's it's far-reaching but usually when we have our own children is when we start saying, we, we got to know how to protect, you know, it's so important. So is um, child sexual abuse prevention possible? Do you want to take that one? <laughs> sure. Um, I think that it, it certainly is, um, you know, that our goal is to better educate people from to protect children um, and to prevent it, but also to intervene if they do suspect that signs or they suspect signs of abuse. Um, so not only are we trying to prevent it, but we're trying to also intervene um, before it gets to the next level. Um, so I, I think that definitely that child sexual abuse is preventable if we can educate everybody on what is child sexual abuse. Um, you know, so many people don't know what the fine line is. They're like, that might not really be abuse. Um, and then they don't, they don't take action because they don't know what they're looking at. So we when can, we've done ahead. some studies with educators in Texas and also um, in the Charleston area, and we've seen that um, docu validated incidents of abuse um, increase when the teachers have taken the training. So we do have some recent studies to show that when teachers are empowered uh, through our programming that um, reports of abuse, validated reports of abuse are increased. So we're seeing that um, the ability to, the, the, to see the need to intervene and the skills to have the ability to intervene are increased after going through training. So. Um, so that's been really hopeful and heartening um, news. I think we need to conduct more research on that because it's just the beginning of discovering that. But it, you know, it, it, we have seen an increase in reports, which is you know, really what we want to see happen. I think that we talked a little bit about bystander intervention. And I think like personally, that's one of the hardest things is you know, to know what the appropriate way is to intervene, whether it's just a boundary being crossed or if it's something more severe and a report is needed. And so I feel, you know, like we have created another module on bystander intervention because that is one of the challenges in protecting, protecting children. So that there's nice, um, there's nice coverage of how to develop those skills in our training. So when that person is, takes your course and they, you know, whether it's a teacher or, or just one of us that are out there in this world and we're, we really have a passion about that. When it comes to reporting, what kind of protective measures are there for the adult that's doing the, the reporting? Is there a protocol that you guys, that you, Darkness to Light has, that teaches the best way to go about doing that? Sure. So we do have um, one of the additional training modules that we have is called Recognizing and Responding to Child Abuse and Neglect. Um, it covers other forms of abuse, so physical abuse, um, verbal abuse, and neglect. It also covers mandated reporting. And so the mandating reporting laws are different in each state. Um, so the course is really great. So anyone can launch it and select the state that they live in, and then it will be populated throughout the course with the state-specific definition of abuse and their state laws for mandated reporting. Um, and so you can make a report of abuse anonymously um, and that that person is not held, to, you know, you're not held accountable for making the uh, report um, anonymous. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, you can make it anonymously and that and that is fine as long as you're making the report. So if you right. Later on, if they find out that you did about the abuse and you didn't make that report and you live in a, in a state that you are a mandated reporter, then you would be held accountable for, it, for not reporting the abuse. But you can certainly make the report anonymously. 
Well, that's good. I think the nice thing to know about reporting too is that idea of a good faith report that you don't have to approve that abuse is happening. You just have to have a reasonable suspicion. So I think that takes some of the pressure off of, you know, oh, but I don't know. I have, you know, my, my gut or my instinct says something's up and there's some signs, but I'm not sure. You don't need to be sure. It's just a reasonable suspicion. And that is up to the authorities to investigate and see if something um, is really going on. And so I, I think that's the one thing we really encourage is that you don't have to wait until there's definite proof. Like you are handing that off Thank to the goodness. professionals that are going to do that. Thank and goodness we goodness for that. We talk a lot about trusting your gut and in, in across all of our trainings because that's, you know, we, we teach our kids to trust their gut when they're around us in a situation where it doesn't feel right. But as adults, we need to do the same thing as well. So, you know, as Karen said, making a good faith report, it, it's not your job to investigate. So if you suspect abuse is happening, you need to, t you know, report to the authorities whose job is to investigate the, the report you are making. So, you know, that's we cool. want... To, to teach our children to touch the, to, um, <laughs> to uh, trust their guts, sorry. But we also need to be doing it as adults as well. Very much, and I know that because I'm so sensitive to it, having been a, having been a survivor myself, I'll be in a situation where I don't have any proof of it, but man, oh man, the goosebumps are like a mile high on my arm. And, you know, and I, I know that I've learned to trust that that, that I need to pay attention, but I haven't known of a way until I've learned about darkness to light that, that I can say, you know, report something. I don't know. I don't have proof, but something's going on here, you know. And we also, um, Karen mentioned our bystander intervention course. And so we talk a lot about, you know, as an active bystander to something that doesn't look right. You know, you see another adult breaking a boundary. Um, it's appropriate to intervene and say, you know, hey, it looks like little Johnny isn't comfortable in this situation, so let's move on and, and go over to the park and play. Um, you know, hey, you shouldn't be behind closed doors with um, Susie, so, you know, let's go out into a public setting. So as an active bystander, you need to take a role in mm -hmm. preventing child sexual abuse as very well. Very much, very much. And one thing I wanted to add, you know, just about like what you're doing with your book and, you know, this Q&A right now, one of the reasons we feel like Stewards is so powerful and provides the motivation for people to want to learn this stuff is the incredible stories that survivors have. And we feature survivors in Stewards um, who share parts of their story um, and, and to both educate, but also to really inspire people to want to make the world a better place and a more protective place for kids. So I just, you know, we work on the prevention side of things and don't work with survivors as frequently, but we do this for the survivors and what you're doing and what all the survivors that are telling their stories are doing is really courageous and I think is a huge um, huge part in prevention also. So, you know, I've just been reflecting on that a lot. Like, it's really amazing what you're doing and, and all those stories that you're telling is really powerful and I think does a lot for prevention. You know, it's been really, really amazing. Two of the ladies that are in my book are for, that were referred by you. And uh, they'll be in part of the interview process that we're, we're hosting this week. And I'm so pleased. And I actually have interviewed every single person that is in the book. We did Zoom interviews and just had conversation. I asked them key questions. And I learned from every one of them. I learned more about myself because it took me till I was 60 years old to even speak up about it because there's such shame around it. Right. And it's such a process of healing and to see what you know when you put 31 people together in a book and they've we've got videos done with it everything um, and it's everybody's sharing out to the world too it's powerful because it creates that much more awareness and having you girls here on the you know for this interview to be a part of this process is really really important because if we could just prevent more of this from happening, because the the path to being able to heal from it is a long one. You know, there's it's probably never over for most of us, but at the same time, it's 
it's a something that that it has to be it's a continually day by day thing because the implications from it from happening from childhood is pretty pretty drastic for most of us so um, why is it the responsibility of adults to prevent child abuse do you want to expand on adult responsibility sure. a little bit? Um, you know, so we feel that it is an adult's responsibility that a that a child shouldn't have to. Um, you know, we so so often we tell our kids to listen to adults um, and do what they say, and you know, children are struggling with. Okay, well, I want to listen to my parents um, and and listen to the elders in my family and do what they say, and so you know, that's something that we that's a whole other subject that we need to how we reframe that. But it's truly an adult's responsibility to protect a child. A child is young and vulnerable and growing and learning in the world, and it's our responsibility to guide them and to protect them and um, and we should be the ones that that are, you know, monitoring the situations that they're in, um, asking the questions that they can't ask. You know, when we drop them off at a daycare, they can't ask, you know, do you have a one-on-one -on -one policy? You know, so that's where, you know, it's an adult's responsibility to be asking the questions, to be monitoring the situations, and to be ultimately protecting the children from abuse, that we shouldn't put that burden on their shoulders. And, and also, um, We've heard of, and I'm sure you've probably heard these stories where there are children that when they're being abused, they do speak out. And if adult is not empowered and educated on how to respond to that disclosure, then I mean, sometimes it can be worse than if the child didn't say anything at all. It's because to be to to disclose and either not be believed or to not, you know, have anyone take any child protective measures is really an awful experience. So we believe so strongly that, you know, whether a child tells or not, that adult needs to know to look for the signs or to hear a disclosure um, and, or to just create protective environments in the first place so that abuse never happens. Right, that's yeah. more important, yeah. Yeah, that's really, really critical. And so, so often, I mean, in the news, you hear about um, child-focused programs that are educating children on how to prevent it from happening. Um, and we 100% believe that that is part of the full circle of prevention. So um, as Karen mentioned, you know, if you're talking to your child about speaking up, if something does happen to them, but then they go to their educator to disclose that abuse happened. But if the educator isn't trained on how to respond responsibly, um, it, then, then there's a disconnect there. So we really feel as though, you know, we play the, the part in the adult focused education, but there does need to be a component where we're talking to children about it as well. And we do have an additional um, training module called Talking to Children About Safety from Sexual Abuse. And it's really great for, for really anyone, but truly parents to be able to, to have that conversation. So in our main course, Stewards of Children, we cover you know, talking to kids about safety from sexual abuse. But then parents were saying afterwards, well, how do I start that conversation? That seems really intimidating and scary. So we created this new additional training that gives them those exact resources. So how do you get that conversation started? Gives them the verbiage, the tools to use. That's so yeah. important. That is really, really important. And, and I also, you know, for the, the child that does have the courage to speak up, that is pretty scary for them. And if they, there's no help, that can lead to a long range set of problems within itself as well. Because then if, if somebody doesn't stick up for them, you know, their tendency to, to hold it within is even deeper, you know, because they bet a help wasn't there. Tell us a little bit more about your Stewards to Light um, program. How does somebody get involved with it? Um, what's, what, how long is the course? What is required of them? Just sure, give us some more details. Yeah, it's called Stewards of Children, and it is a two-hour training course that's available um, in person or online. 
And the in-person um, version is um, facilitated by a trainer that we have trained. They're called an authorized facilitator. And if you go to our website, which is d2l.org, you can find a facilitator near you. We have almost 10,000 of them across the country. So we probably have one near <laughs> listeners today. Um, and then we also have a schedule of in-person trainings on our website as well, broken down by the state that they're in. Um, so we can certainly set up a training. If they don't see one there, we can coordinate that for them. Um, or they could take it online as well. And the online version is also two hours, but can be done over a period of time. So yeah, today and an hour tomorrow, you know, they could take it over a course of time. Um, in both versions, we do get a certificate of completion for. We do offer continuing education credits for nurses and also for social workers. Um, mm -hmm. and that's nationwide. In some states, we offer additional continuing education credits, some for lawyers, um, some for educators. And so it just depends on the state. But we have um, a variety of different CEUs available as well. And the training is $10 in person or online. Um, we also work with a lot of organizations that will purchase the training um, for their entire school or their entire uh, daycare um, or their church. So we're able to offer um, discounts for organizations that purchase it in larger quantities as well. And so there's no um, certification ahead of time that you need to take the training. Honestly, the training is, is perfect for any adult that is concerned about um, protecting children from sexual abuse. And ultimately, our goal is that everyone would take it um, and that you wouldn't choose an organization that hadn't taken the training. Um, we, we have a program called Partner in Prevention. And that's when organizations train 90 to 100% of their staff and volunteers they do background checks, they have a protection policy in place, and they commit to doing the training on an ongoing basis. And we give them a seal of approval, um, and we ultimately look at that as kind of a, 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 um, a good housekeeping seal of approval, that one day you wouldn't even choose a daycare if they didn't have that seal. Um, you know that that organization has made the commitment to protecting children. Um, and it's also a, a red flag to a perpetrator that's you know, because perpetrators will go where there are children. And mm -hmm. so if someone goes to apply at that school, um, they'll see that seal of approval. And, and that will be a red flag. You know, these people take this seriously. This is not a good place for me to go and gain access to children. Um, and so that, that is good for any type of organization. It doesn't need to be a youth serving organization. It could be, you know, a hair salon that just wants to, you know, educate their staff um, and show that they're committed to it because it does take a community. And that's what's so great about our training is that it is really geared for and it, community members. It's geared for educators, parents, um, the youth serving organization, a, a church after school program. It really resonates with everyone. That's it's based beautiful. off of um, something we call the five steps to protecting our children. So it kind of breaks um, breaks apart the, you know, child protective recommendations or education into five kind of simpler steps. So it's a good way to organize it in your head to be able to understand, you know, um, learning the facts, recognizing the signs, talking about it, minimizing opportunity and reacting responsibly. So there's five steps to protecting your children. And um, stewards features, I think, 12 survivors, as well as many community members and child sexual abuse prevention experts. And so the stories of the survivors are woven in with um, experiences and, and advice from these experts. And it's, it's take, you're taken through it based on those five steps. That's beautiful. That is so inspiring just to know that this, these resources are out there. And uh, I think that with the, with the recording like we're doing right now, there's a little more exposure for, you know, for Darkness to Light and the amazing things that, that your organization is doing. Is there anything else that you want to talk about that you want to share with our audience? There's just one thing I did want to add, um, because you did say that, um, you know, you were reaching a number of survivors. And so um, I just wanted to say that we have certainly heard from, from a, 
many survivors that when they first start watching our training, it is very hard for them um, because our, like, like Karen mentioned, we include real survivor stories in our training. And in the very beginning, it, it's very hard to hear them, um, but we kept them in, in their full, in the detail that they gave us because they're real stories. It's what's really happening to children. But what we have also heard from a lot of survivors is that when they watch the training in its full um, entire length, that they feel a sense of hope and inspiration that this can be prevented. Um, so we've had people stop and they can't go further, but I would just urge you know, people to watch it in its entirety that, um, that we hope that they feel the sense of hope um, and inspiration that we try to capture with each survivor's story. Um, and what's just so beautiful is that the survivors that we have in our training um, are each amazing individuals and they, they share their story um, from where they were and where they are now. And, um, and every pretty time amazing. I, still, I still get, you know, goosebumps thinking of just how courageous they are to lend their voice to us to help prevent child sexual abuse. It's really amazing because in this, the interview process for what I'm doing, it is it's such so remarkable as we sit and talk just like we're doing here when they start to tell their story of what was there's a whole lot of us and uh, ahs and sighing and then as they get into where they are because of their healing journey that kind of gets left behind and it begins to flow but even the retelling of the story is very difficult you know and so it, it's an amazing process but Wow, I applaud both of you for what you're doing and for what Darkness to Light stands for. The, the one other thing that I will add um, is that we are focused so much on prevention education, but the survivor and survivors are at the heart of what we do. And so we're launching a new website at the end of the month, and a new feature there is the ability for people to share stories. So we wanted to... Um, you know, in creating this new website, find a way to connect more frequently with survivors because they are so important to the work that we do. And so, you know, that's just something to sh that I wanted to share that we have <coughs> to, to collect the stories and share the stories of survivors um, because I think that is so much it's at the heart of what we do. And it's so important um, to honor, you know, all of their stories. Thank you, and I'll make sure that the, all the ladies in my book know about it, too, so they can be involved. Uh, well, thank you very much for taking the time to do this thank interview. Thank you for hosting. And thank you for everything you're doing as well. I mean, yeah. giving um, all the survivors in your book a voice is, is amazing. It's, it's been really an amazing cool. process. And thank you. So we... Um, I will be posting this out through social media on my website. Also, it will be kind of all over everybody will be sharing it out so you'll probably see a few more things uh, but I will mention make sure that as I'm out and doing my speaking I will make sure that I mention that the resources that that darkness to light provides oh, thank you so thank much you. that's really great and best of luck to you with your book release yes. and thank you I hope that you I hope that it's very successful Thank you, and thanks to both of you girls, and I know it's late in your, in your time zone, so I... <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. All right. Take Thank care. You. All right. Bye-bye.